Let's go into the New England Patriots. Last year, 4-13, and new head coach, new offensive coordinator. Gerard Mayo, head coach. Alex Van Pelt coming over from Cleveland. Or he was just pretty much Stefanski's bitch. So that's great. I'm glad we have that. Projected starting offense. Uh, we don't know who the quarterback will be week one, but at some point it will be Drake May. And he's being drafted like that. Quarterback 22, Brissett is his presumed backup. Brissett could be the guy that starts maybe the first few weeks just to get Drake May a little more comfortable uh, in that offense. RB1, Ramondre Stevenson, bringing in the RB2, Antonio Gibson, from the Commanders over the offseason. The vaunted Patriots wide receiver room. Uh, it is insane to me who how this is listed it is beyond I did me. it strictly off of the underdog adp because i'm looking at this and i'm like this does not make any sense in how they're being drafted zero zero sense uh demario douglas wide receiver 74 nice uh jalen polk the first receiver they took off the board in the second round wide receiver 75 Javon Baker, wide receiver 81. The true wide receiver one, Kendrick Bourne, at wide receiver 97. And then K.J. Osborne coming over from Minnesota, wide receiver 100. Two tight ends, Hunter Henry and Jaheim Bell. Both are, actually, everybody's free. There's not even, there's the single, the only guy that's not free is Ramondre Stevenson, essentially. Everybody else is free on this roster currently. And we have three guys I want to talk about, and I think an interesting one, and I feel like I know why after listening to last week's show, uh, Antonio Gibson. I don't know who bolded him on the show sheet here, but I uh, I, I had a you feeling know, it was Ryan, and he's currently RB50. Again, free. Now, coming from Cleveland, I believe it was mentioned multiple times last week, they like a two-running back system, don't they, Ryan? They certainly do. Uh, we've seen it for years. We saw it last year, which was... Last year, he was with Cleveland where they lose Nick Chubb and all of a sudden it's Jerome Ford and Kareem Hunt. The most interesting thing when I was editing uh, Matt Records article about Antonio Gibson, the most interesting thing was Matt Record said, you know, Antonio Gibson is not Ezekiel Elliott, which is true. But did you know they are the exact same height and weight? I don't and know if, wow. <laughs> I would have never expected you you have this picture of what zeke is in your head and that is not what you picture antonio gibson <laughs> I, think, I, I think if you the, antonio gibson needs a visor i think that I, that's goes, all it is oh, visor man. crop top shirt i was gonna say I it's the crop top visor me. skill hands skill would, skill would non-fumble issues yeah a few different things but he'll be fine Ten thousand career rushing yards yeah, but if Ramondre Stevenson is to play the lead role in this offense, the Nick Chubb role in this offense, that's a lot of meat on the bone for Antonio Gibson, who is bigger than you think he is. <laughs> and yeah. one of the interesting things you would see from Cleveland, at least in the early years of Kareem Hunt, is Chubb worked his ass off between the 20s and then would get taken out. And that could be a killer for Ramondre Stevenson's fantasy value. We've seen Antonio Gibson be productive in the red zone too. So, I mean, I don't think that's a crazy thing, especially when you're looking at fantasy upside there at RB 50, but just looking at Kareem Hunt's averages in this Cleveland style system, 2.92 targets per game, 2.3 receptions per game, nine rush attempts per game, 52.3 total yards per game and 32 touchdowns in five years. That's a flex back. And I'm hundred percent fine with that at RB 50 prices. hundred percent. Yeah, you can sneak him in there. Uh, the I guess the the concern side would be if Drake May gets in there, uh, if and when if he gets in there, he is more Such mobile. A good point than people give him credit for, and that right you run you lose a lot of those. So there's there's obviously two kinds of passes to running backs, right? There's designed ones, which are screens, Texas routes, things like that, where it's like you know they're getting the ball. And then there's the checkdowns, and you lose that. You lose that at times with a mobile quarterback. We've seen it with uh, Jalen Hurts and Justin Fields and and Lamar Jackson. Uh, you, even Josh Allen, too. Even Josh Allen. But Josh Allen does it a little more, uh, I've noticed, than some of these other guys. Like, So maybe if he does play the like the Josh Allen style, they say he plays, maybe we'll be all right, right there. And I get, and then the other thing is that people have, been point, people have come to me and pointing out the money for Antonio Gibson and saying, oh, yeah, he's got a lot of money three-year deal. They seem to really like him. But I think part of that money uh, is allocated towards the fact that there's a brand new kickoff 
that they're doing this mm. year. And Antonio Gibson is a literal perfect scheme fit, right? Like if you could pick a guy, like a stocky guy that knows how to return kicks and also is a converted wide receiver to that has good vision, like he's – I mean, if you have a league that also has points for kick returns, I think Antonio Gibson's that format could be fantastic. You know, if you play uh, – um, what's that? A draft with Giants. Like he's a draft, draft with Giants cheat code probably. But, uh, you know, we'll have to see. I think he's going to – I think they're going to they're gonna make him earn his money. So I think he's going to do kicks. I think he's going to – he can, he can return punts, and I think he's definitely going to work in on some pass downs. But we'll have to see what kind of offense it's going to be. It's going to be a bad one. That's that's all I know. Mm-hmm. That's all that's all I know from this. And There's at the a... at the cornerstone, getting re-signed was Hunter Henry because you know with all the amount of money in the world to spend in free agency, we decided you know who we really need to bring back Hunter Henry. Hunter. We really need to bring him back, scoring four of his six touchdowns in two games this year. Coop, you highlighted uh, Hunter Henry, and I, I want, I, I hope, I hope you have good things to say, and I hope I'm, I'm exuberant and I'm excited after you bring up your points, but I don't think I will be. But I, I want, I want you to pitch me on him. Let's cheer you up, dude. This, this shout out, Ben Coates. See the Ben Coates jersey behind you. Patriots tight end talk starts now. Here we go. So we're reincarnating Ben Coates. Let's do it, dude. Okay. Hunter, Hen- so here's Great. the thing: Hunter, the one thing Hunter Henry doesn't have is speed. skill, right? Skill. He's, well, well, we'll get speed, into that. athleticism. Speed. It's like it's like on Space Jam when he's like, I may not be <laughs> tall, but I'm slow. Yeah, yeah. Hunter Henry is, is tall. Hunter Injuries. Henry tall. Hunter Henry falls in the same category as Zach Ertz, where he has good hands. He can win in man to man. He can win in the red zone because of that, but he's not particularly fast. So he needs to get peppered with targets to have upside in fantasy football. So during this whole period, he's still been good versus man-to-man statistically. He's been good in the red zone. That's why he can have these games with multiple touchdowns, uh, you know, like the the game versus the Vikings uh, like, you know, a couple of years ago they, where he had, should have had three. But uh, the big thing that's been missing for him, as I kind of alluded to, is the uh, plays that are automatic, right, like screens, for instance. Can, venture to guess how many tight end screens, and this is not just for Hunter Henry, for Mike Kosecki, for everybody, how many tight end screens the Patriots called last year? Just a quick guess. If you could throw a number out there. Two. Not enough. Less, two. Than, less than two. What? Zero. 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 You, uh, you want to know why? You want to know why? Because they called wow. five. They See, called not enough. Five, I was right. <laughs> they called five double screens every fucking game. That's yes. why they got right. zero tight end screens. Yeah. They ran a ridiculous number of wide receiver screens which a lot of the top teams did do, but they ran zero tight end screens. Now, the guy coming over with the playbook, Alex Van Pelt, the Browns ran the second most tight end screens last year. In fact, David Joku's 20 tight end screens was second only to our Lord and Savior and Angel Evan Engram's 21 screens. So if you take Hunter Henry and you have his ability versus man-to-man and you sprinkle a couple of extra screens in there, right? And then you also throw in the fact that as uh, Joe ran through there, none of these wide receivers are being drafted in the top 70 on sites like underdog. He has a real possibility to be a top two target on the team, uh, a team where the top target last year was Ezekiel Elliott with 65, right? So it's entirely possible that Hunter Henry comes out and then does have a better year than he had last year. And if you, you know, throw some more freebies on top of his already, his few touchdowns. I mean, now you got a little tight end stew going. So there's a Hunter Henry speech. Let's get Hunter in the hen house this year. All I heard was David and Joku in all cre- credibility went out the window. Um, <laughs> he is, we're comparing a Hunter Henry to David and Joku. I mean, David and Joku himself didn't break out until last year. I mean, sometimes it takes a little time for the big dogs. I mean, Gary Barnage didn't break out until he was 29. Delaney Walker had his best season at 30 years old after being behind Vernon Davis this whole time. I think maybe we just needed a couple of screens for the big lad. And, mm-hmm. you know, if things don't pan out, it, we've got the screen master from college, Gene Bell, right behind him. So you go scoop him off waivers, no big deal. I, I love the optimism. I have zero. He I think might... faith, faith in the chat said Joe, the pessimistic Pats fan, Coop, the optimistic Pats fan. It's the yeah. Patriots odd couple. Yeah. Here. So I just here's 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 my issue. Um, Hunter Henry has the speed of a canoe. 
So it doesn't help him. Four seven four seven four. Yeah. Yes. I mean, that's the same speed as Zach Ertz, though. I mean, like we've well, seen let's it. Let's be clear. Four seven four was when he came out. <laughs> I don't he's think not he's running a four seven four right now. now. <laughs> I've been down. I've been over to Gillette Stadium. It's right down the street, dude. They got the TB twelve method going him. on over the there. The TB twelve method is bankrupt. What do you mean? Yeah, All of faster, Tom Brady's business ventures are stronger. bankrupt. Alex he Guerrero got scammed by crypto. He's still Alex Guerrero's doing great, dude. He's hanging. He's out not. No, Br- he's no. doing fantastic. Incorrect. I think he's drinking more water now that he's here, right? You I, know what I mean? It's there's no like Josh. Yeah. <laughs> Josh. <laughs> Incorrect. All of Tom Brady's business ventures he's have gone down the toilet. Rich. Hunter Henry's rich. So he's a lot more guaranteed money from New England now. Hunter so. Henry's rich because but, Bill Belichick just paid and, him whatever he wanted. And here's the thing, people. Here's the thing. When you're you're spending up on a tight end, right? You're drafting the the Travis Kelseys of the world and and the Mark Andrews. I, you, you're asking yourself why. You're saying why? And I asked Kelsey's myself why we have him on the roster every single Travis day. Travis not that I fast do. himself. And you say, why am I spending up on this guy? Later on in your drafts, you ask yourself, why not? Why not? You say, <laughs> why exactly? Why? Like when you get down all the way down to the dredges where Hunter Henry's being been, uh, you know, been cast off to the side, you ask yourself, why can't this guy be a top two target on the team, Joe? And unless you are just like the biggest Pop Douglas fan that we've seen, or I mean, it sounds like you do enjoy yourself a good Kendrick Bourne. I mean, why can't he be one of the top two targets on the team, this Mr. Hunter Henry? It's Pen like being Pen Pen it's you. like being the tallest midget. It's not an accomplishment. It's not an accomplishment to be second in targets on this team. Second I mean, in targets could be seventy. Seventy, 70. would do it. Where he's going in on underdog, I think seventy would do it. Ugh. All Listen. you need is 90 targets. Every top five tight end 20 straight years had uh, has had either 90 targets or 10 touchdowns. All dude. you need in this world is 90 and targets. And skill. To Coop's yeah, point, though. He's got some skill, dude. I've seen it. I've seen it. Let's rewind to underdog. Henry did all of his work in four games last year, and you Correct. had no idea when you were going to start him. So if you can That's take every him top 12 tight end not named, like, Kelsey Andrews. Laporta, like him more so, but he what I'm getting two at games is of two touchdowns. And that is six the perfect the best ball type. Perfect tight end. He's perfect angel. I agree. Perfect angel for best. In ball. fairness, Hunter Henry has one career season over 90 right. targets. So there's that. He also this had time, two. It's time. Uh, we we waited due. this long. Alex Van Pelt, perfect angel. He had two of his touchdowns in a Thursday night football game against the Steelers. You get all them points and get an underdog. You get all them points, dude. All those safety points. And you don't have to worry about the other weeks where the screens might not be flowing. I mean, last year, zero screens. Dude. Zero screens. But as Joe pointed out, he's free. free. If you were going, as still feels like pointed out, with a non-early tight end best ball build, and he's a perfect one of three tight end. I've been doing some where I wait, and I don't take a tight end, in the, a single tight end in the top 15. And I walk out of there with, you know, a, a little Hunter Henry, a bit of Pat Fryermuth, maybe some Juwan Johnson. You just got to tell yourself. Pat Fryermuth is going that late? Tight end 16, yeah. I just wrote an article Why? on Pat Fryermuth over at FantasyAlarm.com. Go check that out now. That's that's free. It's the Muth. It's a uh, Pat the, Fryermuth is that low? That's what I'm spraying, dude. You can get these guys. They're all floating around out there, dude. The myth, the myth versus the Muth is up on Fantasy Alarm right now. And yes, I will draft Pat Fryer over Hunter Henry, but I'm telling you, you start looking at these other guys, and there a lot of these other guys are on teams with two locked in top two targets, sometimes even top three, right? Like I see people drafting Cole Komet. You got to be outside of your mind drafting Cole Komet, where he goes and he goes tight end fifteen, right? Like Good old they standing have three, on that one. They have three wide receivers now, and they also brought in Shane Waldron, who rotates the tight ends. And the first thing he did was bring in the pass catching tight end that he was the tight end coach for the Rams when they drafted Gerald. Dick. And he brought him to Seattle and they're going to rotate these tight ends. And they've got three wide receivers and rookie quarterback. And Cole Komet goes like 30 picks before Hunter Henry. So like, uh, I don't know. It, I, I think that the upside's there, but yeah, you're right. Uh, you know, you the floor is not there. So you got to be very careful. I've never heard a guy more passionate about the least irrelevant or the most irrelevant uh, <laughs> position in fantasy football, let's get, not name the kicker. Let's do uh, We can go, we can go deeper, dude. We, I love we, haven't it. Even, we haven't even um, gotten to the chargers and stone smart yet. 
I, I, I don't want to. I, I really, I don't want to. We will. I don't want to. Uh, Josh, Kendrick Bourne, uh, the... I don't know how he's 97. I don't know why he's not being drafted as the number one receiver for these Patriots. What do you got? Uh, really, it boils down to the knee injury. That That's the only legitimate reason why I feel like he's being the forgotten guy. I mean, obviously, the two rookies, you're going to have plenty of dynasty people that are drafting an underdog right now that's inflating their ADP a little bit. And then, of course, the late pop from uh, the aforementioned Pop Douglas. But this is what I find interesting. When you look at the splits – between, you know, Demario Douglas and Kendrick Bourne playing together and then Douglas without Bourne. Together, Kendrick Bourne was on pace for 107 targets and 66 receptions. Douglas was on pace for 73 targets and 46 receptions. Yeah, because Kendrick Bourne's better. He Well, but he plays more of that, like, boundary role, whereas Douglas is not a good boundary guy because he's five foot eight. So, and that's what I find really interesting because this is a scheme that does not work in slot receivers at all. This is a boundary tight end running back. That is who the Cleveland offense throws to. So I feel like that alone is going to minimize the opportunities for Douglas, unless you're telling me that a five foot eight, 185 pound wide receiver is going to somehow dominate on the outside. And I just don't think that's going to happen, especially with, God knows what at quarterback. So for me, I would much rather, I mean, granted, it, they're all good values at this point. You're talking about wide receiver 74 versus wide receiver 97, right? They're both free. You're probably not drafting either of them anyway and can pick up any of them between weeks one and four in the season. But I think the better value is Kendrick Bourne because I think he's simply the better player. This team is so reminiscent of the Arizona Cardinals from 2023. It's ridiculous. When you look at, the stopgap quarterback in the beginning of the season, moving into what is presumably the future quarterback. The only difference is for the Cardinals, it was Kyler Murray coming back from injury. For the Patriots, it's the future, which is Drake May. But they have stopgaps at wide receiver with a tight end who's likely going to be a focal point in the offense. And oh, by the way, that offensive scheme is right out of the Browns playbook as well, just like the Patriots. So, How were, how were those Cardinals wide receivers last year in fantasy? I mean, they weren't great, but you were paying a, a heavier price for Hollywood Brown than you are now for Kendrick Bourne. Okay. So why pay twenty five Hollywood Brown's bad more Sorry. for Pop Douglas when you can just wait on Kendrick Bourne? It's kind Kendrick of Bourne was getting, getting a, at. Hollywood Brown was getting a lot of targets last year before he got hurt. And I will say with Kendrick Bourne, people worried about the injury. Like that was obviously what October when he got hurt, and then they signed, they paid him in March. They signed him, and they, mm -hmm. I'm already seeing things that you know. He, they obviously asked him what his timeline was like, and his answer was, was that he's going to be the comeback player of the year. So he seems Damn pretty. Right he, he seems pretty calm. I wonder what the odds are on that one. He seems pretty confident uh, that he's going to be back and ready to rock. And yeah, I mean, uh, it's kind of interesting, man. And it, what's funny is that one name we haven't mentioned yet is the highest paid wide receiver on the team. So. Juju, which is Juju <laughs> Smith Schuster. He's still on the team. I'm, I'm not really going to lie. I forgot about him. Dude, they can't. Dude, they literally would cost. Up Juju. Damn, I would literally cost them money to release him. I forgot about him. Yeah, is he? He's not. Is he on the team? I don't. Is he on they the would, team? They would have to get rid of him I, at this stage. They would actually have to probably take one of their picks and pack, package it with Juju Brock Osweiler style to move him. Like I really, uh, I think it it saves them zero money to. So standing ovation for myself last year uh, for calling that bullshit out. Uh, and these two dumbass saying, oh, Juju's not that bad. Lick a nut. Seriously. Well, his like, knee, you know, his knee. What, what if he, what if, what if the knee's right? What I don't right? like how optimistic you are. Juju Smith-Schuster <laughs> is terrible. I have terrible. him projected for literally 11 targets this year. Yeah. It turns out that. It's 11 more than he deserves. Yeah. When everyone's covering Antonio Brown and you're playing with a Hall of Fame quarterback, it makes life a lot easier. Yeah, it's way easier you, to look. You at. think? Yeah. You think <laughs> when you're getting the third best guy in the secondary with a Hall of Fame quarterback? Yeah. But speaking of bets, uh, as alluded to by Coop, top three favorite bets here, and these are season long picks. These are just sports books of choice. We have Drake May over twenty six or two thousand six hundred fifty and a half passing yards. That's minus 112 on FanDuel. And who is taking the over on that? Ryan is taking the over on that. Patriots at Bengals week one. Okay. 
plus nine. How are those odds out? That's insane. How are <laughs> those back. odds out? Go back. I, I'm going to um, do a quick disclaimer for Joe. Player props are still absolutely unavailable right now. Drake yeah. May is the only existing player prop for them. Yeah, there's some Iron weird, they, there's just a few peppered in there for, yeah. yeah. A lot of rookies, oddly, they have. Yes. Yep. I, don't know why, the I don't know how they know that Lad McConkey's set to get 775 and a half yards already. Yep. I it they He's got a dog. that one. They put a He's pin a in dog. That yeah. Uh, but I, I imagine, Coop, you have the Patriots plus nine in week one against I, the Bengals. I, I like to think that we all do. I mean, I I don't I don't hate that line in its current state. I don't hate that line. And then Josh, you have the Patriots win total uh, under four and a half wins, and that is plus one thirty five on DraftKings. It's minus one sixty for the over. I just want to throw out that Josh was so optimistic about last week's three teams, and immediately comes in this week pessimistic as hell. Yeah, I I think this is I I think it's a five win team. I still think I still think they beat the Jets twice. Okay. I I have full confidence they beat the Jets twice because the there's Jets just lot, shit on themselves. There's not a lot of wins on that schedule. I was going. To... This is the way that I look at this team, right? Jacoby Brissett is a great Jets. bridge quarterback. He's a good leader. He's somebody that can keep everything in line. But he's not going to be the reason that this team actually pulls out any wins. You don't right? know that. You, you can win. No. You can you can bet ten bucks to win a million that the Patriots go undefeated in the regular season. <laughs> ten bucks to win, and that's crazy. You lose, you lose ten bucks at four oh five Eastern on week one. But no. crazy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But leading up to that, you have a screenshot that is going to grab some attention on Twitter. So you're buying the engagement there. Yeah, million. God. I uh, one million. So here's the here's the thing. Here's the, I'll just jump in on mine real quick. The Patriots, because uh, I know you know I, we probably. Can't talk about Patriots all day today. As much as we would all like to, uh, the Patriots plus nine. Uh, I part of it is that I think Jacoby Brissett will start, and Jacoby Brissett I think is pretty serviceable, and he knows the system from his time with Alex Van Pelt. Mm-hmm. So I think that if they announce him as a starter, that line might come down a little. So I like, I like that. it at plus nine. We also have some. If you just take all, just take the teams completely out of it. Uh, when you look at at teams. That had a spread of eight or more in week one. Going back to 2020, 2003, so 20 years, those teams are 25 and nine in week one. So spreads of eight or more, the the books have not been good at predicting the week one blowouts, right? Those teams oftentimes are covering, like the Patriots could lose to the Bengals, but not lose by nine. You know what I mean? So for me, I look at it and just say historically, Vegas not good at predicting week one blowouts. Plus, we don't know who the you know, the quarterback's going to be, we don't know what's going on with T Higgins. We don't know what's going on with Joe Burrow's wrist. You know what I mean? It's it's early enough that I'll take those points and, uh, and we'll see what happens as we get closer. But I will say when I, I wrote an article on week one bets at the time I wrote the article, the line was eight and a half. People are already betting on the Bengals. So uh, I don't know. I think that that one's right. I think that Jacoby Brissett and the gang can pull it out. And if Drake may is so good that he starts week one, well, that's even better. 